Hi guys and welcome back to Twisted Locker, your definitive horror podcast. Today we're going to be doing a brand new review. We've got 2024's Ghostbusters Frozen Empire directed by Gil Keenan. Jenks, what are your thoughts on this one? Um, first off, uh, pretty disappointing. Um, you know, it, part, part of me thinks I probably slightly enjoyed the the, the female one a little bit more, even though like I can't stand that, and it's an ugly film, and I'm not gonna rant again. Did you just say it. that? Did you just say <laughs> that? <laughs> but, but with I've with this film, it was just it was just overstuffed with things. Like at one point, you had eleven Ghostbusters, so you had you, you had your main four, you had your new four, you had um, uh, McKenna Grace uh, who play, uh, plays Phoebe. You had Paul Rudd who plays Gary. You have Carrie Coon who plays uh, Carrie, and you have uh, Finn Wolfhard who plays Trevor. Now I had to write all those names down because I couldn't remember any of those characters' names at all. Yeah. I think the only one I could remember was Phoebe, if I had to really think, uh, the little girl. But the problem with it, it starts off they instantly in New York, and they're on their call, and they're chasing that. Um, that fish ghost, and you're thinking, why have you jumped to this? Why, why haven't we not seen? So you got uh, Winston now. He's a very rich person, and he's bought the firehouse. He's funding this sort of ghost industry, whatever. Fantastic, great way to keep him in there, okay? And you could keep him as a regular sort of consultant. Now, you could have had him go in to that summer town. Is this some Summersville? Sorry, uh, and yeah. giving it and telling them what he wants to do and they could have left Somerville, gone to the firehouse, seen it all dusty, cleaned it up, tested out the fire, the the pole, gone on their first call out and you could have got the, got to know the family a little bit more. You could have had Paul Rudd then struggling to be a father in those moments where they're putting it together but instead they went 100 miles an hour straight into it They've already been Ghostbusters, they're established, they're on another call out. And you think, what's the rush like? And then you've got so many different characters. So you've got, so you've got those four. Then you've got uh, Janine, Bill Murray, Dan Aykroyd, and Winston Zedmore, and uh, Ernie Hudson, for another four. So that's eight. Then you've got a uh, podcast from the last one. And then you've got uh, the love interest from the last one, Lucky, she's in there. You've got yeah. you've got the scientist guy played by um uh what's his name? James A. Caster. James Is Caster. Yeah. yeah. Um if you count um Camille Nanjiani, um who's uh, the fire guy, he's half a ghostbuster. Then you've got Patton Oswald, who's like another consultant. So that's 13 if you include him. And you're thinking Dan Aykroyd's already the sort of ghost expert consultant. You do not need Walt um I say Patton Oswalt to be another consultant. Uh, it is overstuffed, and and then you've got another sub story with Phoebe goes off and befriends a, a ghost called uh, Melody, which again, all these elements are all fine, but it's only like an hour and forty minutes. It's it's ridiculous. Yeah, I know. Yeah. Um, you hit the nail on the head with all those points, Jenks. Do you know what? I went into this one with high expectations, even though the reviews were quite, quite low. It's a yeah. Ghostbusters film. It's got the original cast in it. It's back in New York City. So I thought, there's no way this one could go terribly wrong. Now, it didn't go terribly wrong. But, and yeah, I do agree with all your points. And I would touch upon them even more. But obviously, I've got my own feelings coming out of it. And I was really hoping, because I knew... You'd already text me because you've seen it a few days before me yeah. saying it was disappointing. I was hoping I would go in and love this one and then we could have a little back and forth because yeah. weirdly, we've been on on the same level uh, yeah. doing these reviews. I thought it'd be a lot more one-sided. But um, yeah, so like I said, going into this one, I had relatively high expectations and I wanted to love it. And I'd say the first 30 minutes... Uh, on top of what you said, um, we rushed straight into it. They're already there. They're already established. They're in the firehouse. But the first 30 minutes, I was there. I loved the law of this new villain. I thought it was another original villain. Obviously, with Afterlife, they just brought an existing one in back yeah. from the original. 
Now, we had this new exciting villain, and then when we learned about his backstory and his lore, I really got into it, and I really enjoyed the new story they brought into it. But that was about 30 minutes of the film, and mm-hmm. then I'm waiting more time and more time, yep. and then all of a sudden, it's it's gone an hour, and there's still no ice, there's still no villain. We're just following the characters, going here and there, jumping between, like you said, 14, 15 different characters. Yeah. Finn Wolfhard, I feel sorry for him because his character is probably one of the most underused characters I've ever seen in a film. He jumps in, says a couple of lines, and that's it. The only Mm. screen time he got in this film was when he was um, when he was up in the attic with Slimer. That's about the only bit of substance he got in this film. Now, the main thing I was looking forward to with this film, right, is Frozen Empire. I thought, amazing. New York's going to be frozen over, and the whole film's going to be set in this like post-apocalyptic frozen New York. And I loved the title as well, and I thought it could go great places. Again, I don't want to spoil anything or go into it too much, but we do not get a frozen empire. No, no, Everything is rammed into the last part of the film, and then it's done. Yeah. Um, massively disappointed with this one. Yeah. I had such high hopes. I really enjoyed. I really enjoyed the last one they done, but like you said, Jake, this one was so over crammed and stuffed. And I checked my. I checked the time about twice watching this. I I couldn't wait to get out of the cinema. To be well, honest, do you know? What's frustrating is that it had the bones of a of a really good franchise starter. So you've got um, definitely, you know, you you've got. I I don't know why they thought that you need Bill Murray back in it, Annie Potts back in it, um, because they don't serve anything at all. Now I, I don't really care that they brought the library ghost back. Who cares? It was it was blink and you miss it. It didn't matter. But Afterlife was there as a passing of the torch. You didn't need to do it again. Yeah. Um, I don't think this movie needed Bill Murray to sell it. I think we were already on board after Afterlife. And I thought Absolutely. it was a great idea to have Ernie Hudson as this rich person so they could think, well, how are they funding this? Well, he, he, well he's got money and he's invested in, in ghost hunting and he ne- he's never had a lot to do in the other films. So it's great that then he's the financial backer. Fantastic idea. And then you've got Ray, Ray Stanson, played by uh, Dan Aykroyd, who is the consultant that they go to whenever they need to f- figure out some some ancient markings or a book. And he could be he could be Absolutely. permanently in this franchise. He doesn't have to suit up. Neither does Ernie Hudson. They could just be consultants, and they could remain. They're not even for passing on the torch. They'd serve a really good purpose to help with stories. And I just I I wanted. You know that we've got the Paul Rudd side story where he's trying to be a father, which is fine, but he didn't have any screen time. Carrie Coon and him didn't have very much screen time. She was just this, no. um, you had Phoebe was just going off as like a moody teen. Again, I don't care, but there wasn't enough time to see anything other than her being a moody teen and being friends with this uh, ghost. That it, if he took that out of the story, it still would the same story would happen if you took Slimer out. It was to happen if you took Patton yeah. uh, Oswald out. There's so many things that are wasted, and I was and you, I did I didn't even mind having Walter Peck as the mayor, but again, it was just for fan service. He didn't really absolutely uh, have any any. He didn't try and shut down anything a, a little bit towards the end, but it was just like a wink to the audience, and it was. Way too much fan service, and the the last one had too much, but this had even more so. You know, I was uh, yeah, yeah, I agree with you, Jenks. So honestly, uh, like I said, I had high hope for this one, massively let me down. Um, like you were seeing with these side stories, the biggest problem with this film, right, is there weren't enough ghosts and there weren't enough action. Do you know yeah. what would have been really cool, right, if there was ghosts in it? Like if we yeah. had more action. But the thing is, they, they, they spend about 80% of the film building up this one villain that they're going to show us for a very small amount of time where you're wasting time where we could have been doing other things like mm. going and hunting other um, ghost stuff like Men yeah. in Black. For instance, you've got main villains in Men in Black, but throughout the film, they've got side quests where they're fighting other aliens and we get enough of that stuff. Whereas this one, we just got all these side stories all it's just a mess there's just so much going on with it um it felt like a three-hour film um 
it really, I honestly, I, I, I checked the time at one point and I was like, this film's been on for about two hours already. Anyway, Alan, guys, that's all we got time for. Catch you on the next one.